Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers here at Victory Fellowship Church. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers who are tuning in. We love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for your unlimited love and uh, your unlimited grace. Let us start off our day, our Mother's Day, with worship. Thank you so much that we are all made in your image, and especially when we reflect, we reflect on the endless grace that moms have for us. You know, when we have our grumpy days, our frustrated days, when we could be difficult, um, the beautiful grace that moms have, because moms are definitely made in your image. God, I also want to thank you for the reckless love that mothers have for us, that, ooh, yeah, sometimes we're fantastic, and sometimes we're just not. And just the same way that you love us with unconditional, um, unfaltering, reckless love, it's the same way that moms do too. So thank you so much for that, Lord God, and thank you for creating our mummies. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 
to all of you. We have a few announcements before we begin today. Just a reminder from the things that we mentioned last week. We do have a congregational meeting next Sunday after church, so please stay for that if you could. May 21st, right after church, and uh, we'll be looking at our finances and just things that are going on in our church, kind of giving an update, so again, please stay for that. Also, on June 3rd, Saturday, as we've been uh, mentioning, Pastor Lon and Yumi are taking a, a missions team to Japan, and we're having a fundraiser on Saturday. What did I say? Oh, did I say? I'm sorry. <laughs> Pastor Kevin and Ayumi. <laughs> Isn't Cambodia the same as Japan? <laughs> same direction, yeah. Uh, and then Ayumi and, uh, no, okay. Um, so Saturday, June 3rd, and they're sharing by the team in the brunch. And if you can sign up on the website, there's a link there, okay? And then uh, just click on that so they'll know how much lunch uh, to provide. And then they'll have, know how many people are coming. So if you can do that, and it's pretty easy. And then there'll be donations at the door, all right? And then in a couple weeks after that, on Wednesday, June 14th, we have Reignite Hope again. And again, it's on a Wednesday, and it's just an awesome ministry. And again, on Wednesdays, they have a full Bible study. And so we'll be providing lunch for them, spending time with them, just investing in their lives, listening to their stories, and just uh, blessing them. So please consider uh, joining that um, program as well, okay? So let me know or Tanya know if you're interested. All right, so good morning again and happy Mother's Day to all of you who are mothers and grandmothers. And perhaps some of you or all of you have received cards already. But I want to read what some children have written to their moms, and here are a few. Some of them are pretty funny. First one is, motherhood requires love, not just DNA. That's so true, right? It's not just having kids, but loving them. Second one, it's amazing how many sentences I start with my mom always says. <laughs> kind of like the movie, what's that? Uh, Forrest Gump. Mom always says. I like the next one. Hey, mom, thanks for the boom and board. <laughs> Get it? Woman board. All right. Anyway, and the next one, being your kid was fun and all, but how do I sign up to be your grandkid? <laughs> because we know that moms, when they become grandmothers, they just spoil their kids, unlike uh, their, their children. But I love those. Funny but true. And in regards to those cards, thank you, Mom, for your watch care. 
your advice, your sacrifice, your provision, for your unconditional, unconditional love, your affection, just for being a blessing to your family in so many ways. And I think all the while just being bombarded in and burdened with so many other things in life. And you do all those things, so thank you, moms. This morning, in honor of all you mothers, we want to show this video, and it's titled, Seen and Celebrated. Okay? Because this morning, perhaps you've been just struggling, or perhaps you've been a mom for years and decades and decades, and you're thinking, man, what kind of impact have I made? And, and what, am I a good mom, or was I a good mom? And do my kids really notice all the things I do? So this morning, uh, Seen and Celebrated. Let's watch that. We are moms who are pouring ourselves into our children every hour of every day. We are grandmothers who are also playing the role of primary caretaker. We are moms who are waiting to have children and trying our best to see the struggle through the eyes of God. We are moms who are learning the challenges of a blended family. We are moms in the workplace who are trying our best to balance competing expectations and demands. We are moms with adult children who are leaving our homes to pursue their own dreams. For packing lunches late at night. For cleaning out their backpacks, then filling them again. For offering gentle guidance to your own grown children. For becoming taxi drivers and appointment schedulers. For making sure the right baby doll is in their arms before they go to sleep. For helping them pay back their student loans for cleaning and sterilizing and cooking, for doing their laundry and his laundry and our laundry, for praying and loving and forgiving and falling down and rising to your feet again. For the mom who is overworked and exhausted, for the mom who seems to spend a million hours on a million little things, for the mom who pours Jesus into her family as best she can, and God himself not only celebrates what you do, but rejoices over the uniqueness of who you are. You are seen and you are loved without limits. Welcome to Mother's Day. I love that video. Mothers, I pray that the Lord would speak to your hearts today. And may you know deep down inside that you are seen and that you are celebrated by your family, by your children, and by God. You're seen and celebrated. And there's no, mom, there's no doubt that you moms deserve a lot of credit because of your role in, in just in the health, the well-being, the stability of our families. I remember when our kids were young and they were in uh, nursery school or in, uh, elementary school, they would make a lot of Mother's Day gifts, okay? And so... They would use pipe cleaners, right, or uh, ice cream sticks, or beads. But the commonality among all those handmade gifts was a lot of Elmer's glue, okay? There'd be Elmer's glue poured all over just to make sure things stuck. And I think that it's quite fitting as we think about glue because I think glue represents all of you amazing women here today who are mothers and all the mothers in our lives as we think about them. Because it takes a special kind of woman to be a mom. What the Bible describes as a mom is they use the Hebrew word ame, and it means the bond of the family. Or it signifies a force that strengthens and holds things together. So this morning, I want you to have that picture in your mind. I want you moms to know that who you are and all that you do, you are the glue that holds our families together. And I think back upon that, back to my grandmother, grandmothers, and my mother, and, and even Wendy now, and I think that's so true. And I think John 15, 12 through 13, perfectly describes your lives of sacrifice. Jesus says to us, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than he laid down his life for his friends. So true for moms. Sacrifice, love. Unconditional. I want you to know that 
But through your lives, through your lives of obedience, as you follow Christ, you are impacting your children greatly. And I want you to see that, see that it's true, not only through your lives, but through this example in the Bible, how moms are so influential. And the story is about a young woman named Eunice. She was affected positively by her mother, Lois. So there's Lois and there's Eunice. And after getting married, Eunice and her husband had a son named Timothy. Okay, so there's Timothy, Eunice, Lois. Well, both Timothy's mother and grandmother just invested in Timothy, spent hours with him, telling him stories about the Old Testament, praying with Timothy, praying for Timothy, training him in the things of God. Now, back in those days, unlike our family, they didn't have veggie tails, right? Veggie tails is great. I don't know if the, uh, the moms these days use them with their little kids, but it's like they tell biblical stories, and they're pretty accurate, and it's kind of entertaining, and it's like we used to put those videos on all the time for our kids, leave them for two hours. No, just let them watch it for a little while, but it was, it was cool. And then, you know, you take them to Sunday school, and the kids have VBS, and they learn about Christ. But here, back in the day, Eunice and Lois created a spiritual positive environment for Timothy to thrive in. And then one day came to town a preacher named Paul. And Paul spoke about this man named Jesus. And both Lois and Eunice came to place their faith in Jesus. And they focused on teaching Timothy about him as well. And along with Lois and Eunice, Paul came to lead Timothy to save him faith. And many years later, after he grew up, Paul was in prison, and he wrote two letters to Timothy that we know of as First and Second Timothy. And it reflects on the mothers who helped Timothy and just shape his life. Second Timothy 1. To Timothy, my dear son, I've been reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother Lois, Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded now lives in you also. It's amazing how he, he pointed out the influence that, that his mom and his grandmother had upon his life. You see, when moms model genuine faith, they create this learning environment where children can, can grow in the faith and learn about their faith, can thrive. And the word sincere here means unhypocritical. It means that Timothy's faith was real. And these two mothers were committed to Jesus, and Timothy was impacted by their mom and grandmother. Mothers, I imagine today, obviously I'm not a mother, but I imagine today that sometimes you wonder what kind of influence that you've had upon your children. It could be one, two years that you had your kids. It could be 50-something years. But you wonder, huh, what kind of mother have I been? Or you wonder what kind of impact that you're having upon your grandchildren. This morning, I want to encourage you to reflect and to be encouraged to follow Christ. And as you continue to follow Christ, to understand that God is using you. Know that God is using you mightily to impact your children and grandchildren. And I know this is true because I see a lot of your lives, and I sit back and I, I look at your children's lives or some of your grandchildren, and I see that, that it is true. God is using you, so be encouraged in that. And I see that it is true in, in this one family. They're going to be sharing this morning. And I see how the mother follows Christ, loves Christ, serves Christ, loves her children, and it makes a big difference upon their children. And so this morning we have Randy and Alyssa Suzuki who's going to be sharing about Naomi. So if they can come forward. And I guess this, this was supposed to be a surprise, but I think she found out this week. Yeah, Naomi? <laughs> That's okay. You'll be surprised about what they share. So I'm blessed. So we have Randy and uh, Alyssa. Can you guys get the chairs?
Well, hello, you two. This is great. Um, so, Randy, let's start off with you. Uh, can you describe um, some qualities that stand out to you um, uh, uh, that describe the fantastic mother that Naomi is? Um, yeah, I was so nervous, so I had to write it down, so that's the, <laughs> the clipboard. And it's not that Naomi told me what to write or anything like that. <laughs> But um, I wrote compassionate, um, protective. Um, she's a teacher, not only in school, but at, at home. And she's loving and she's strong. That's beautiful. Lisa, do you have anything you want, you'd like to add? I do. Uh, some of the ones that I wrote down were um, mom is sacrificial with her time. Um, she is resolute in what she believes. Um, she's creative and she is prayerful. Mm. Are there any stories that you'd like to um, illustrate the blessing that Naomi is in your household? Um, yeah, so there's a lot, always a lot of stories, and, and then uh, I thought about them, and I go, well, I could embarrass Naomi. <laughs> but Na Naomi's, if you know Naomi, she's, she's the kindest person and just genuine, and um, I'm very lucky to have married her. And, be the mother of my kids, and um, and so what I like I said, I wrote things down because it's easier for me. Um, Naomi's just a she's a good example of being Christ-like. Um, just as Christ died on the cross and just showed His love by by being that ultimate sacrifice for us, He He did that um, just unconditionally. Just He just went up there and He need, He did it. And Naomi's the same way. Um, she shows us love um, like she would just naturally stepped in harm's way just to protect her kids and you know I see that all the time um, so my story is when we go to we go fishing annually I go fishing with probably some of you here annually to Mammoth and when you go fishing in Mammoth at the lakes um, you encounter bears and um, actually Jim can you put the first picture up um, this is just Naomi and our, our three older kids. You guys see Owen a lot, but our three older ones are in college, so you don't see them. So this is our three younger ones. And, but when we go fishing in, in Mammoth, um, you encounter bears. And we don't worry too much about the bears because they just come around or, you know, they're, and they come steal your fish. And uh, so it, it's okay. But the thing about bears is sometimes there's cubs. And the, bear, the cubs come around, that's when you worry. You worry because you know there's a mama bear around the corner, always watchful and, and always watching. And that's when we know, yeah, we, we just have to worry. <clears throat> so at, at home, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, I don't know if you call the rascal, I'm the youngest in, the, in my family, so I, I kind of tend to mess around with the kids. Um, at home, there was laundry on the couch and Owen was sleeping, and of course there were socks rolled up. I had to throw the sock at Owen, you know. So I throw a sock and it bothers him, you know. And I didn't get the reaction I wanted, so I threw another one. And then he's like, Dad, stop. Of course, doesn't stop me. <laughs> get another one, throw it at him. And he's like, he says one word, and then I freeze. He says, Mom. <laughs> OK? When he says, Mom. I stop. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. That's, it, it's, it's just, um, you have to know, can you show the second picture up? And this is what I mean. Okay. <laughs> when I, she, she, you know, he says mom or any of our kids will say mom, not only, even me, I'm scared. That's, that's where I, that's how I see Naomi. And, and it's just an example of, you know, and, and Rick kind of said the verse too, but in 1 John 3, 16, it says, by this we know love, that he laid down his life for us. And Naomi's you know, just that example um, to our kids, and it's just, um, yeah, I'm very thankful. Thank you, Randy. Alyssa, do you have anything you'd like to add? Yeah. Um, when I was thinking of a, a story to share um, and what quality to uh, highlight about my mom, uh, I thought about how she is prayerful and uh, whenever anything happens in our lives, um, me or my three siblings, um, she's very quick to turn to the Lord in prayer. 
and um, I think about Philippians 4, uh, where it talks about being anxious for nothing, uh, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, um, letting your requests be made known to God. Um, and I think my mom models that in everything part particularly well. Um, and I think, uh, especially when I, I tend to get nervous or dwell on things, um, even last night I was talking to my parents and she was, um, she's always quick to point me to Christ and to remind me to trust in him and to bring um, whatever I'm thinking before God in prayer. Um, and then just as uh, an example, um, this is our prayer jar at home. And my mom, probably for the past few years, um, she does it quietly throughout the year, but whenever something happens um, that she um, wants to praise God for, she'll take um, like an empty strip of paper and she'll write the date down and then she'll write whatever the praise is. And it's everything from like, my car got fixed to um, we got to catch up with some friends or um, any anything small or big that um, God has been kind to our family in. Um, she, she wants to remember that and, and recount that. And so throughout the year, she'll put these little strips of paper into this jar. And then at the end of the year, around New Year's Eve, New Year's, um, we'll all sit on their bed and, and we'll all take out a handful. And then we go around in a circle and um, just read off what it says. And um, I'm really thankful that she is um, just has a, a heart of, of gratitude to the Lord for what he's done and um, is always looking for ways to point my brothers and I and my dad to um, to praise God for, for who he is and what he's done. So that's my story about my mom. It's so beautiful, powerful. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Flo. Thank you, Randy, Alyssa. I wish I had some socks I could throw at Owen right now. <laughs> Those are great stories, and I'm sure you had many more stories to add about Naomi. And thank you for sharing the picture of her. <laughs> it doesn't have any resemblance to you, Naomi. I realize that Mother's Day may be an emotionally difficult one for you. Uh, it's a joyous one for a lot of you, but I know for some of you it's a difficult one. For many years it was a very difficult one for myself, and perhaps you too have had a mother who has passed away, and so it's a very tough time, Mother's Day. Or maybe your relationship with your mother hasn't been that great in the past years. Maybe you want to be a mother yourself, but for some reason or another, that hasn't happened. Or perhaps, as a mother, sadly, you've already lost a child. Or for some of you, maybe motherhood has been tough because you've been flying solo and you've had to raise your children on your own. Whatever the case this morning, uh, I pray that you would feel valued, you'd feel appreciated. You'd feel loved. That you would be encouraged today that you have had a significant and inspiring role in your children's lives. And not only for you to think that, but for all of us, I pray that we would have that, that, that thought about our moms, that yes, our moms were, were impactful in our lives and, and they were a blessing. Uh, for some words for all of us as, as we close our time this morning, words of encouragement to you who are mothers, and really to all of us, and it has to do with prayer. And Alyssa uh, spoke about how Naomi is a, is a mom of prayer. The basis of this encouragement comes from the story of Hannah in the book of 1 Samuel. The Lord had closed Hannah's womb, and she had a rival in another wife of her husband back day that was okay and although this was true hannah was faithful in her prayer as we see in first samuel one you don't have to turn there but let me read 
This was the account starting in 1 Samuel 1 and verse 6. Because the Lord had closed her womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Elkanah, her husband, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? Once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on a chair by the doorpost of the, of the Lord's temple. In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much. And the word says that she sulked and was angry at God? No. Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. And in verse 12 again it says, And she kept on praying to the Lord. And in verse 16, it says, I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Think about her situation, not being able to have kids, and then uh, another wife of her husband just, just egging her on and just irritating her. Hannah persisted in seeking God, even in the face of persecution. Her rival was merciless in her ridicule and her emotional torture of Hannah, but Hannah didn't give up. Even in her heartache and anguish and grief, she sought the Lord in prayer. And that's why I appreciated, too, what Alyssa shared about Naomi, because in all things, I know that Naomi prays, and she puts those prayer, those praises and those prayer requests that were answered by God in that bottle all year round. Secondly, 1 Samuel 1, 11 speaks of another attribute or another thing I want to encourage you in. Verse 11, Hannah says this, and she made a vow saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of my life. And that we know that that happened. And then in verse 27, it says this, I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I will give him to the Lord for, this, for his whole life. He will be given over to the Lord. My second encouragement to you, besides praying, pray specifically for your children. Consecrate, set them aside, dedicate them. Give your children to the Lord daily. There's nothing like interceding for your children. Pray for them. Pray for wisdom, protection, provision, that God would meet them, that God would speak to their hearts. No matter how old they are, how young they are, how old they are, lift them up to the Lord daily. Because remember, whether they're living with you or they're not, they are in a world that the, God has called them to be in the world, but not of the world. They're in a battle each and every day. And it's much different now in our world than it was when we were growing up. Yes? So pray for them. Give them over to God daily. Allow God to, to surround them and protect them. Pray for them. Dedicate them to the Lord daily. Thirdly, and this is for all of us, 1 Samuel 2.2. 2. Hannah gets a whole section in the Bible of her own prayer. That's pretty amazing. David had a lot of those. But Hannah here, if you have your Bible and it's, and it's an old school one, you can see it. And the title of 1 Samuel 2 says, Hannah's Prayer. That's pretty cool. Hannah, excuse me, 1 Samuel 2, 2 says this. And this is Hannah praying. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. We realize, mothers, that it is not easy sometimes to be moms, is it? From when they're a young age all the way through adulthood, you... <laughs> worry about your children and life is tough sometimes but hannah she worshiped the lord and she depended upon him she acknowledged the holiness and sovereignty of god of all the things that people that we can depend on hannah depended upon the lord solid foundation unshakable never changing dependable that's who hannah held on to. That's who Hannah cried out to. That's who Hannah praised. 
So if you have time, read that whole passage of Hannah's prayer, if you could. It's a blessing. Pray continually. Dedicate your children to the Lord. Lift him up. Lift them up. And worship the Lord and depend upon him. Now what's cool is that God heard Hannah, answered her prayer in a wonderful way. We know that son was born and his name was Samuel. She named him Samuel because she said that he was a gift from the Lord. And at the time of Samuel's birth, the whole nation of Israel was plagued with lawlessness and immorality. But the word says that Samuel grew up in the Lord. He grew up in stature and in ways of the Lord. And then Samuel became a leader in the nation of Israel. And he led them in their first great revival. And he drove the Philistines back into their own territory. And he reestablished worship of Jehovah God. You see, prayer makes a difference. It made a difference in Hannah and Samuel's life. Impactful. Transformed him. So my encouragement to you is keep up the prayer for your children. Wendy's teaching Sunday school this morning, but I, I wish she was here because there's a lot of things that I appreciate about her. She has served God faithfully here at the church for 25 years in children's ministry. She loves others outside of church, or in church, outside of church, does a lot of things for people. She laughs a lot in our household uh, about a lot of things. <laughs> just, just cracks up. She has a funny laugh. And uh, she brings life to our family of all boys, including our dog is our fourth boy. And um, she likes to dance a lot. She kind of does this combination of like exercise dancing. She, even last night she was doing some type of move and she was trying to <laughs> make sure that Riley knew how to do it. And I just didn't even attempt to because I, I can't do it. <laughs> and where she shows us some funny Instagram um, things that she always sees and it's just a crack up when she starts laughing. But one thing I do appreciate her uh, for is her prayer, like Naomi. Uh, she does go to sleep later than I do. I go to sleep usually by 11 or 12. She goes to sleep like 2 or 3. And many times when I wake up to uh, go, go to the restroom, I notice the light is still on in the living room, and I kind of uh, go out, and I, go look, I kind of go like this because the light's bright in my eyes. And I see Wendy in front of the heater. The heater's always plugged in, and she's sitting there like all curled up in a little ball on her knees. And admittedly, she says she does fall asleep sometimes, but she began that moment in prayer. Mostly for our children. <laughs> Probably for her husband too, but mostly for her children. And it happens probably, I would say, like 90% of the nights. I'm always waking up, and I like, notice the light is always on, and it's like, why don't you come to bed, honey? And she's always there starting. And I know she prays because she buys all these books on Amazon about praying for her children praying for her family, being a woman of prayer. And she not only just reads it, but she does it for her kids. And I appreciate that. This morning, again, I want to encourage you, moms, it's not easy. I understand that. But continue to seek the Lord, gain guidance from Him, gain strength from Him. Know that you and your life, as you follow Christ, you influence your kids. And all those three things, pray, dedicate your children to the Lord, and seek God as a rock like no other rock in this world. Amen? Uh, as Flo comes up, I want to pray for all you moms. If there's a, if your mother or, or you, your wife of, of your children are, are near you. Pray this prayer for them. For the rest of us, consider your mom if she's still alive and, and pray this prayer for her. If she isn't, like my mom, then hey, rejoice in, in, in who she was and what a blessing she was to you. So let's, let's pray and we can hit the lights. Let's pray for our moms. I know that all of you as family has given some gifts to your mom, some form or another. But honestly, all the things that we can give to in this world, I think one of the greatest gifts 
that we can bestow upon our moms, our wives, our grandmothers this day is prayer. To bless them. So let's do that this morning. Moms, I pray that the Lord's presence would abide in your lives and that God's spirit would reign supremely over all things in this world. And I pray that God's word and that his Holy Spirit would guide you each day, that you would have the wisdom and the power and the joy in order to face all whatever comes your way, that you would thrive in all those things that God brings you through. And I want to claim in the name of Jesus that for you moms, that you would know that you would experience more and more of the Lord. And that in turn, that you would continue to be a blessing, an influence upon your family. And I pray too today that you would be encouraged, that you would be strengthened to fulfill and flourish in all the roles, roles that God has given you as a woman, as a wife, as a mother. And I know that, that that represents a lot, but may God be with you in those roles and responsibilities of life. And I pray too that the Lord would uphold you and encourage you to be a woman, to be a mother of prayer. And for all of us this morning, as we think about our moms, no matter what has transpired in the past, I pray that, that we would be grateful for the influence that our mothers have been upon us. As they reflect upon who they are or who they were and all that they do or have done in our lives, help us to see and to celebrate our moms today. And in all this, Lord God, we give you praise, all the praise and all the glory. Thank you, Lord. Be close to our moms today. Lift them up as they rest in your presence. Thank you, Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's continue our time as we worship the Lord in uh, songs of praise. To all the moms. <clears throat> all the grandmothers, all the aunties, and um, all those out there who have, te who have taught, who have mentored, coached, um, been like surrogates, and um, uh, brought others under their wings. Because um, as Pastor Rick had mentioned, there's some people out there who um, don't have moms or lost moms or may not have the best relationship with their mom, but they've had a woman to look to who was like... Um, like a foster mom or a surrogate mom that God put in their life. I just want to bless you. Um, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and give you peace. May you just bloom and blossom and know that you are the rose of Sharon in God's eyes, that he cherishes you, he loves you, and he's saying, well done, my good and faithful servant for loving my creation. Amen.
his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening when you're coming and you're going and you're weeping and rejoice Let's do that again. Yes. Oh, man. Oh, man. Keep going. Oh, man. Oh, man. Beautiful voices. Oh, man. Sing with all your heart. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening when you're coming and you're going and you're weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for Again, reach it up to heaven. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Victory Fellowship, I so selfishly love it when I hear your voices like that. So beautiful. I can't imagine how it touches the heart of the Lord. My goodness. Father God, we just lift up our resounding worship to you. We celebrate who you are. We celebrate the fact that you so brilliantly, geniusly created moms and dads, the blessing that they are. And today we just lift up, we consecrate, we celebrate moms, mothers, mother figures, those who've taken um, others under their wings and nurtured, cared for, spoken life into. We give absolute thanks for moms and mother figures. Jesus, in your name we thank you and pray. Amen. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give Grateful heart, give thanks. 
Oh, and Father God, we thank you for all that you've done. We thank you that mothers are made in your image, and we thank you for your endless abundant grace and the endless abundant grace that they have for us. We thank you that with every scratched knee, every boo-boo, every heartbreak, um, every time we need to be lifted up and encouraged, moms have been there for us. And moms have also been there for us to give us tough love, just like an Olympic coach, encourage us to be the best that we can be. Uh, moms are like, you know, um, the grizzly bear with her cub or the lioness with its you know, with its baby. Moms are there to fiercely and ferociously protect us, just like you do, Lion of Judah. So we thank you for the amazing grace that moms have for us. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Twas blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve how precious did thy grace appear the hour I first believe back to amazing grace amazing grace how sweet the sound I love the harmonies that saved a wretch like me I was blind, but now I see. Let's sing Twas Blind again. Twas blind, but now I see. all rise as we close our time this morning. Let's close our time by reading portions of Psalm, uh, excuse me, Proverbs 31. And this is dedicated in honor of all you who are mothers. Let's pray. A wife of noble character, who can find? She's worth far more than rubies. You are valued, moms. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. Thank you for all the hard work you put in for your family. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. Thank you for your compassion and love. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. Thank you for your wise and encouraging words. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Thank you for your diligence and taking care of all the tasks of your home. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Thank you for the gift that you are. For the blessing that you are to your family, thank you for a blessing that has been bestowed upon us by God. And may you be lifted up and honored and thanked and praised. 
this morning and today. Thank you, Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, people, for coming. Thank you again, Randy and Alyssa, for sharing uh, this morning. And I'd like to hear more stories at the end of service. Thank you all, and we just, we just look forward to next Sunday just uh, rejoicing in the Lord uh, again together. So come back next week, next Sunday at 10. Thank you again. Have a blessed time with your family, just uh, celebrating all the moms in your lives. Thanks. <laughs>